Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us this morning, and thank you to Laura for your um, amazing uh, tunes that I've been playing this morning. Sorry, I'm just getting my screen together. Um, so, good morning and welcome to this morning's webinar. My name is Chris, and along with my DWOL colleagues, Daniel and Jade, we're going to be showing you how to try and engage learners using digital tools that you currently have at your disposal. Um, in the first instance, I'm going to be showing you how to use the feedback tools in Shobi. Now, if you're not familiar with Shobi, it's an online learning platform, also known as the Paperless Classroom, which allows you to set up virtual classrooms which students can join by the way of a code. And then once it's set up, worksheets, uh, videos, music files and images to the virtual classroom and children can annotate the documents and images or files and then submit them to you for marking. We've lost audio on you. Can you unmute your microphone, please? Right, you got me back. Am I back? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Sorry, when, when did you lose me? Sorry, at the beginning? No, we, we saw the first little bit. We lost you about maybe 10, 15 seconds ago. Okay, cool. Right. Sorry about that. Don't know why that happened. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I've used Glow back in 2010 when you could do something very similar. It was very clunky. It was very complex and extremely time-consuming to set up. But the idea was there, remote learning. Um, I've also used platforms like Edmodo in the past and Google Classroom, but I've found Shobi to be the easiest to set up, maintain, and more crucially, to get the children and staff, in, staff involved in. Uh, I and most of the teachers at my school in Shawlands Primary use these tools regularly in class as a form of summative and formative assessment, and as a way of not just giving timely feedback, but also engaging our learners in the feedback process. Now, the feedback tools in Shobi are easy to use for both adults and children, um, and I appreciate some of you watching today may already be aware of these, but for those that aren't, I'm going to run through them again. So here you have the pen tool, the highlighter tool, which can change colour and change nibs. The next tool beside that is the eraser, which allows you to remove any annotations that have been put in place. Then you've got the comment function, which I'll be demonstrating shortly. There you go, that's how you use the comment function. Um, so a brief comment in there. Uh, then you have the voice comment, which I'll just move that around the screen. The voice comment, which you can leave voice comments on any piece of work by recording your voice. And then the text box function, which not just allows you to increase size, use colour, but crucially when you enter the text, um, no matter what colour or size you put it, um, it does have a transparent background, which as you can see is great for the children leaving comments on lines, etc. So those are the tools that um, you mainly use in Shobi to offer feedback for the children. And then, of course, you also have um, a side of the comment text box. You also have the tools over to the top left-hand corner, which are undo and redo. Now, what you're looking at here is basically a piece of text that children have used. They have been offering feedback on the text that was in a piece of writing. And you can see they've used the highlighting tools already. Unfortunately, you can't hear the comments that they've left due to teams not being able to uh, process the sound. So this one here, you can see they've used comments 
and it's engaging the learners in the, their own learning. They're giving comments to each other back and forward. And this one here, you can see they've actually used a mixture of comments and voice. Now, like I said, you can't hear what is being played here, but um, it is quite good feedback, and it starts engaging the children in the process of offering feedback to each other and recommending how the piece of text can be improved. So we'll just let that play out here. In the next example, we can see how the pen is being used, the pen function, to complete uh, an activity that's been uploaded. Now, as you can see, the writing is extremely, um, extremely neat here. So what they've, what have been done, they've clearly been using an Apple pen or a Logitech pen, but obviously other pens uh, are available on the market. You can also see here that the teacher has left a comment, and this comment really is the beginning of the process of engaging the children in their learning, and it starts the feedback process by where the teacher leaves a comment on the work the children have done, and then the children can respond by either by way of a voice comment or a text comment. You can see that comment box there. I've always had to black out the names. Uh, this, for me, is a very interesting piece of work that a teacher did. Um, this is quite recent, whereby the, you can see that the child has completed a piece of work, but she's saying that she's slightly confused by, by the whole process. So you can see just above that comment, there's a little explanation video. So what the teacher has done here is she has used the video tool in Shobi, the video edition tool, to add uh, an explanation video. And what you're going to see in the next slide, if I play this video, you're actually going to see that the teacher has now decided to do the explanation video. And on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see that the teacher has shown the example that the child has done. And then on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that the teacher has her notes open. And what she's going to do using the annotation tools is she's going to talk through the work that the child has done and explain how she's got from A to B by using the, the annotation tools and explaining her thinking and then uploading that video to Shobi for um, the child to um, go over. And of course, she can go over that unlimited, um, an unlimited amount of times, there is, which, is, which is great because it then allows the child not to just look at it once, have the explanation once, but it also allows her to go over it numerous times if she needs to or he needs to um, recap something or is unsure about something. So what this is essentially doing is this is creating an environment where the pupils can pose questions and the teacher can respond by either by way of comment, by either way of not voice note, or as you've seen in, the, in, this, in this example here, by actually showing an explanation video. So to wrap up, these tools can be used really easily by adults and children during and after teaching. And I'll admit to using these tools during teaching while you've got a class, while you're working with groups, does take practice. Um, it's not something that happens immediately. You know, I've been sitting in groups um, where I've been teaching a group. I have my iPad beside me. I've got groups completing work um, and then looking for feedback. And it's about multitasking, working with the group, providing feedback at the same time and adding additional pieces of work. If, um, if they need more to carry on with while you're working with a group. It does take practice. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. And I know it sounds a lot, and it is a lot to do, but we as teachers are adaptable creatures. And after, as we've seen during this, uh, the pandemic, of having to work from home and, and try and improve how we, we, we do remote learning. Um, but after a few weeks of working like this, it does become manageable. So by all means, when you go back into school, do try it. Um, 
find a workflow that suits you and uh, and and give it a give it a go because um, it is a great tool. The feedback tools give immediate feedback, and you may be surprised. I initially thought that um, a lot of the children in my class would like to leave voice notes, in particular those children who who maybe struggled to put complete sentences together or weren't confident about their spelling. I initially thought that they would prefer to use voice notes, but surprisingly, they actually moved away from the voice notes and actually tried to leave text messages and comments, which in the result of that is it's also improving their, their language and, and uh, writing skills. So I hope you managed to take something from today's session. I'm now going to hand you over to my colleague, Daniel. Thank you for watching and listening. And uh, Daniel, I will hand over to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Chris. That was um, that was great. I'm now going to share my screen so that you can see what I've got on mine. So, okay. I hope you can see what's on my screen and hear me clearly. Um, my name is Daniel Keenan, and I am the I am at Cuthbertson Primary School, and I'm one of the DLOs there. A uh, big thanks to Chris for showing us some of the things you can do with Shobi. Particularly at the end of Chris's video, we saw a teacher actually creating a sort of how-to video or an explanation video. And in today's session, I'm going to explain to you how to create your own explanation videos and also um, how you can actually show the children how to create these explanation videos. We'll maybe talk a little bit about how that can actually then go into learning and, and ways that we could think of using that in our classrooms and, and in different aspects of the curriculum. So um, just to overview what I'm going to talk about, I've only got about 10 minutes to, to fill here, so I'll try and keep it going at a good pace. Um, just remember that you can go back and watch these later if you think the pace is too fast. And also remember, I will upload this um, with the Connected Learning team so that you can access it at your own leisure as well. So today I'm just going to um, cover why do I think explaining your thinking is important? So creating these explanation videos, why is it important? How is it relevant to pupils' experiences? So, you know, thinking about ways to hook the children in and get their interest. I'm going to have a very quick look at the Explain Everything app, which is another app that's available that helps you make, helps you create these um, explanation videos. Um, then I'm going to talk to you how to do that on your iPad by finding the screen record function, turning on the microphone, combining screen record app with the notes app to actually create these explanation videos. I'll show you an example of a child's work from my own class and talk about what I was able to get from that. I'll show you how to share the videos to various learning platforms and I'll also have a think and consider the possible curricular links that you might want to think about if you decide this is something that you'd like to explore in your own classroom. So first of all, having a think about why is explaining your thinking important? Well, when the iPad rollout began, I always remember that we were told the iPad should enhance the learning experience and not replace what is already there. And I think this is a great example of a way to use the iPad that I, I can't really think of a, of a way to do this before we had the iPads. The closest thing really would be taking pictures or videoing children as they were doing things. Um, but really, it, it's, it, you know, that takes a lot of setup and Whereas using an iPad, it's much more intuitive, much more easy to use. And the great thing is it all comes in one place. So it's actually providing you something that we couldn't do before we had this technology, which I think is great. If you're having the children work on these videos, it gives you the capacity to hear the thought process of the different children in your class at the same time. So you could have five children making five videos at the same time. But at the end of the day, you can watch all five of those videos. So in a way, it's almost like giving you that ability to be in five places at once in your classroom and hear five different children and how they've tackled a particular problem or a particular task. 
As teachers, sometimes we can't be everywhere, everywhere at once. So when you take work in at the end of the day or at the end of a unit, you might see the product of what's been created. But what this allows you to do is look at the process of how it's been created, what the child was thinking and how they came about their answers. So that's why I think this is important and valuable. And I think um, it's something that all teachers really could benefit from. Um, thinking about why this is relevant to children's experiences and really trying to think of a way to hook the children in. Um, I was thinking, you know, children are all into their YouTube videos and so on. So for me, I looked online and found many explanation video creators on YouTube. And as you can see here, this particular one is a medical YouTube channel. It's got 756,000 subscribers. So as soon as the children see something like that, they start to put a value on it and they realise, all oh, right, so you know, creating these explanation videos is actually what successful people do. And it also has links to uh, further education, um, maybe thinking about university and college, how they could create these videos as part of their coursework and into working life if they have to create presentations for um, you know, different businesses or, or different areas of, of work. So lots of links and lots of ways to hook the children's interest. Um, this was actually a video I was going to show you just as an example. Um, unfortunately, we can't hear the sound, so it wouldn't really make sense for me to play it over here. But this is just an example of a YouTube video with you know many thousands of views that uses the exact same principle of writing on a screen, recording what you're saying and sharing it with people to, to you know further on information and share information with people. So I'm just going to take a quick look at the Explain Everything app. Now, I'm not going to use the Explain Everything app today, but I think it's important that I make you aware that it's out there and that it also does a very similar thing. The reason why I'm not using the Explain Everything app is because, first of all, it doesn't come on every iPad. You have to download it separately. It does have a subscription, so you have to sign up with an email address. If you go for the free option, there's a time limit on how long the videos can be. And you can only make three videos and then you have to delete one of them to make another one. So there's some limitations in there. Um, what I would say is that it is a very good app and if it's something you wanted to explore further, I would encourage that. Um, also, this app has lots of options, um, lots of tools and it can be quite confusing. It's, it's a much more advanced app than the method I'm going to show you. But just for a very quick look, the Explain Everything app is here on our iPad screens, that's what it looks like. When you go into the app, you would just very quickly click onto new project after you've subscribed. And as you can see, what I was speaking about just a few seconds ago, you've got lots of tools. It's quite a confusing layout. And in my experience, the children are more interested in playing with all these tools than actually focusing on the task that I've been assigned to them. So for me, this would be something I would work towards or you know, a next step if it was going in at beginner level or for the earlier stages of primary school, I would say, um, you know, it would be better get some practice simply using screen record and the notes app. Um, this is just an example of what you can create using the Explain Everything app. So Explain Everything's there for an option, but what I would encourage you to do to start off this sort of journey would be to use screen record and notes. So first I'll show you how to find screen record on an iPad. For some reason, they've found a way to hide this excellent feature away in the back of the iPad in the settings where you might not know it's there. So I'll just show you how to get that unlocked and that means you can have a go at this too. So you have to go into your settings app and once you're in the settings app, you're clicking onto control center. And click on to customize controls. Then you will notice the screen recordings there and it's got that green plus arrow. If you press that green plus arrow, it moves it into your control center. From there, if you go back to your home screen and you swipe down from the battery percentage sign at the top right hand side of your screen, you'll now see you've got the screen record function added in and you're ready to go with screen record. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is to turn on the microphone. This was my first sort of problem I came across when I first went onto this app. And that was that when the children were recording, but what they were saying wasn't coming through. Uh, so you have to actually turn on the microphone. 
So again, you're swiping down from the top right hand corner to bring up your control centre. And if you long press on the record, then you will find the option to turn the microphone. It says microphone off. If you tap that once, it turns your microphone on and you're ready to go. So now I'm just going to quickly show you how to use the screen record function along with the drawing tools in the notes app, two apps that come straight onto the iPad and um, combine those together so that the children can start creating these explanation videos. So you'll find your notes app on your iPad, you just tap into it. To get a new note, you just click on the top right hand side, you can see I've highlighted that there. When you do that, you'll be presented with this screen and your keyboard. What you want to do is to click on the top right hand side of the keyboard, you'll see the sort of pen nib icon. You just press onto there. And just to give a bit more space for the children to work, um, as Chris was saying, without a Logitech pen or an Apple pen, it can be quite difficult with a finger. But I know school budgets maybe don't allow for those kind of resources. So to make the screen as big as possible so that the children have got more space to work, just press that button and it should go full screen. And now here you can see the children have got presented with tools that they can use to share their thoughts and ideas as they work out a problem or complete a task. If they're screen recording at that time, you can see the whole process, how they've came to that solution. And you can see here, it just says, I can use this space to, to show my thinking. And really, that could be anything. You could put anything in there. The children can create anything in there just to show their thinking. So once the children have made the recording, you need to actually think about stopping the recording. So to stop a recording, you can see in the top right hand side, we just click into the, 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 the little uh, recording red icon at the top right. And it comes up with this option, screen recording, do you want to stop? And we just press stop and it should say screen recording video saved to photos at the top for you. So that's easy to do. It saves into the photos app. It's something the children will be very familiar with to access. And for me, that's really quite key. Um, I'm just going to show you now a quick example of a child's work. So unfortunately, you can't hear the child's explanation, which was a big part of this video. But unfortunately, the Teams app we're using at the moment won't allow us to share the audio from this. So I'll play it anyway for you. And what happens throughout the video is the, the, the child's here trying to simplify the fraction. Uh, he's making a visual representation of the fraction. He's now using the highlighter tool to sort of highlight that visual representation of the Now, you can't hear this, but the child's explaining that they're using a visual representation and they're doing that. And now they're saying that to simplify it, they would divide by two. They're now trying to create another visual representation and they're explaining that they're doing that while they're creating and he's made that connection and, and, and he's now attempting to highlight the, the, the other fraction to show his understanding. And what that showed me was that the child had an understanding of simplifying fractions. And what I was able to do with that child was talk about making sure that the visual representation that they're using is, um, you know, the same and, and, and consistent with each other. You can see there the visual representation of the second example is a bit different. So for me as a teacher, it showed me that the understanding was there, the explanation was there, um, but we just needed a bit to work on, on that next step. I'll just very quickly show you how to share the video. I'm aware of, of the time and I don't want to take up too much time. So um, to share the video, you go into your Photos app and you click on to the Share icon. And you can share it to any of the online learning platforms that you're using. So whether you're using Shobi or Seesaw or Microsoft Teams, or you want to save it to your OneDrive, whatever you're using to share things and, or even AirDrop in the classroom, you, you've got the, 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 you know, the ability to do that. So the reason I'm, I, I'm glad to show you this is because it doesn't really matter 
what platform you're using. We've already heard from Chris about Shobi, and I know Jade's going to speak about Seesaw, but no matter what platform you're using, this is a skill that teachers could use and something that they could add into their classroom practice. Um, just thinking about possible curricular links, for me, this links really well to the Glasgow Improvement Challenge, especially thinking about Glasgow Counts. I know there's a big focus on actually considering, well, you know, uh, as far as the, the, the children are concerned, what strategy they're actually using and doing things in a different in different ways, finding their answers in different ways. And to me, this lends itself really well. I can also see it lending itself well to science. And I've put lots of question marks here because, you know, it can really lend itself to, to any curricular area you can make it, any anything that you can fit it in with. There's loads of scope for this. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is just thinking about leadership of learning. What I've actually done is use previous videos that have children have made and I've actually used those in the next week's lesson or the next day's lesson. So the children are seeing their work and they're seeing their work then leading that session in the next learning. So it's another way to get children that are maybe less confident to stand up in front of children to take a lead in their learning, but they're doing so by sharing a video with the whole class rather than having to stand up in front of a whole class to maybe take that leadership role in a specific lesson. All right, now I've tried my best to, to do that as quickly as possible. I know I've maybe went a little bit over my time there. Um, thanks very much for um, watching and thanks very much to uh, you know Laura for organising and especially the other DLOs I've worked with. It's been a pleasure working on it. So thank you very much and I'm now going to stop sharing my screen. Hey there, thanks Chris. Uh, Daniel, I'm just going to try and share my screen just now. Can you see that there? Yeah, we can see you Jade, that's perfect. Perfect, that's great. And the reason that we haven't um, shown the slides full screen is because when we did our trial one yesterday, when you open it, in full screen it's a slight delay so like you're talking about something but you can't see it so it is just a little bit small but as uh, Chris and Daniel will do I'll upload the PowerPoint onto the teams as well so thanks for joining and thanks to Chris and Daniel we had a good laugh yesterday when we were trialing this out it was good to see what each other were sharing um, I'm Jade Patterson I'm the DLO um, from Battlefield Primary and I've never used Shobi we're actually a, a big seesaw school we're one of the pilot schools there's two in the city so ourselves and I think it was Notre Dame with our pilot schools um, just to try it and I'm just going to talk to you a bit about how we use Seesaw um, and the iPad in general to support pupils leading their own learning at Battlefield. The first thing I want to just share was you know why we use Seesaw and how this kind of came about. When I came to the school in January uh, last year I'm on this economment the school were using learning stories and I spoke to my head and said could we move towards Seesaw so like an online learning journal um, and they said just try it out and see how it goes. So for us uh, we found that learning stories were very time consuming. I don't know if you use them in your own schools but it was a lot of cutting and sticking. It was quite an onerous job. I found it very very stressed when it was you know everything at once and it was like the work from the previous term was getting glued in. We just wanted to move something that was more instant uh, for the children and the parents and for the teachers. It was the transition that we kind of worked from between May and now and as a whole school, we're all using Seesaw. We felt that learning stories had almost stopped serving their purpose. And for us, we have a few teachers in our school who have pupils who also attend the school. And they felt the same, that they were just as a collection of things. Whereas in the world that we live in, technology has taken over. And we have these, at the, the, they're, in our, they're in our hands. You know, we have them on their iPads or on our phone. Um, so from August last year, we can move forward and we said, OK, we're going to use this as a whole school. We had some staff training on it. Um, lots of for CISO and for Shobi, I imagine there is a lot about um, parental permissions and making sure you have that in place before you get started. We wanted to ensure there was continuity across the school, so we decided amongst ourselves how much we would post. It was very good timing for us. We were one of the first schools in the city to get our pupil iPads. We got them in September, and you know we started using CISO at the same time, so it was a very good time. And for us, one of our biggest positives and what's come out of it is we've actually got a ninety-eight percent. Um, engagement from families on Seesaw, so 98% of our families are actually on Seesaw, which 
is, you know, as a great number, it is really high, but that didn't happen overnight. That was one of those things where teachers were grabbing parents at the school gates and saying, oh, come on, I've got your code here. Let's just get you logged on just now. And lots of phone calls. And we also held quite a lot of drop-in sessions and seesaw parent information sessions. And the staff have been excellent at really gauging those parents and trying to get everyone on board because we didn't want anyone to feel left out. So we've also got 2% of families we need to still get on. But it's an amazing figure and we recognise that it is a high figure. So in terms of battlefields areas of development and for seesaw was we wanted to work on pupil voice, pupil engagement, effective feedback, reducing teacher workload, which, you know, it's one of those things we're always trying to tackle and evidence in our learning. And this is where we started um, in battlefields. So this is just something that I made. It's a step by step guide. It's in all of our classes across the school from P1 to P7. Um, and basically, it literally is step by step how you upload to Seesaw. It's it's very good because it allows the children to then take ownership of what they're posting because we felt like what we're putting in the learning stories wasn't really what the children may have wanted. We were just, oh, that's great work, well done, put that in your learning story. Whereas for this, uh, the school that I'm in, obviously, it depends on the school that you're in, but the children are allowed to choose. Um, yeah, so on the right hand side, we for each class you have your pupil names and the pupils just go as they please and they tick it off when they've logged on. And for us, this has been really good because you're able to see at a glance who's posted the initial of the day as well, when they posted, but also it lets you see, you know, who's not posted in a week, why they're not posted, do they not feel that that, that deserves to go home and kind of try, try and encourage children, which is great. I just saw someone asking that. I'll definitely send this out. You can have this just to keep the only thing that's on it is a picture of my dog, but you just a wee cute lap, so you can have that or edit that if you want. Um, but this has been good for us because, again, it's continuity across the school. We're all doing the same thing. And you know yourself, you've got siblings in the school. You want to have the same thing going across the school um, so that everyone's, you know, singing from the same hymn hym sheet almost. Then I'm just going to show you how we started to use Seesaw in your school so we use it quite a lot for videos and sharing things with families but also as Chris and Daniel have said it's just so good to have that there to refer back to because once you say something to a child and also for yourself when someone tells you something I forget so quickly but whereas you have those things recorded or in video you can refer back to it so the first one was just uh, two boys in the class explaining their equivalent fractions and the second one was an example of a P3 class um, to try and engage parents more. So basically the child was asking the parent, you know, what character have I written here? And it's just trying to engage that parental engagement a little bit more. And it was basically for the children to start sharing their own learning of what they were proud of, because we felt that if you have a learning story, it's only going out four times a year, whereas this is much more instant for us. The one on the left is a P1, and the one on the right is a really interesting one, and it just looks like a bit of foil. I totally see that. But... What the infant teachers decided to do in our school, which is an excellent idea, was they found that at the end of the day they were having like 30, 40 photos on their iPads and then they didn't know who they belonged to because obviously we are a very play-based school and it was lots of construction, a lot of creative work and they thought, oh my goodness, I don't know who this actually belongs to. So what we did, or the infant staff did, was mix, a, a child wanted to post something seesaw, they had to put their name next to it and you can't see that on that. But they, it was like almost like a rule that they had to put their name next to it and it made it so much easier for the teacher because they were spending so long trying to work out, you know, who did this, when did they do it? And, you know, we're almost detectives at that, the writing side of things, you know, try to gauge who wrote something by guessing by their writing, but for construction and creative things, a little bit more challenging. And then there's just other examples of how we've shared what children have done. The one there, right, is the one I'm going to speak about a little bit just now and how... We have used Seesaw and used apps to share learning with parents and share strategies. And what I was going to say was, we feel that with Seesaw, this is kind of the sharing of learning and successes of young people. And we wanted to make a shift towards 
at what I learned today and how I learned today. So our wonderful PT, uh, Claire Rogers, on this call actually, she really wanted to raise the profile of Glasgow Counts within our school uh, alongside Glasgow Improvement Challenge. And basically what she'd set a staff to do, which was fantastic, was a task of basically setting the children off to share strategies that they want to share with their parents. So it may have been that they were getting homework and they weren't sure how to do it, or there was a new strategy they hadn't heard of. I know we have this citywide because there are so many new strategies that we're teaching children. So you can't hear this, but it was just short videos. And the way we did it is it didn't have the children's faces in the videos because then there was more that we could share out with the families. But the children basically shared their videos and they brought either they'd done partition, they'd done arrays. But what I liked about this in terms of pupil voice and leadership was that we didn't tell them how to do this. We basically just set them off as a whole school approach and allowed them to be creative with how they delivered their videos to their families. And then we uploaded that to Seesaw and it meant that the families had a bank of resources, a bank of strategy that they could then refer back to when it was time for homework. And by chance, cleared them at a very good time because you know, now we're, we're in the situation we're in and we're still sending maths and things home in numeracy and the parents have that at their disposal if they want to use it. This is one of our older classes and this is just an example of how they shared what they were learning in maths and numeracy. And what I love about this one on the left is it just says, using Numicon to make fractions and iPads to capture our learning. And for us, that's what we're using iPads for, to let the children capture their own learning. It's not the teacher saying to them, you know, this is how we do it, or can you do this, or can you do that? It's about the children, you know, being leaders of their own learning. We've made a shift in Seesaw since the pandemic started, as I imagine almost everyone has. So now we're using it much more for feedback and for evidence and learning in terms of our older children as well. And then this is an example of Primary 7 just sharing their work with their teacher. And as you can see, yeah, she shared it with her iPad, but she's obviously still writing and her daughter and then this was how the primary one teachers and primary two and primary three teachers in our school are using it where they're reading their reading books out loud to the pupils so they can still hear their teacher's voice and then giving that feedback for children to improve and reflect on their next steps for learning. So just to kind of for the second last sort of slide here is just to think about and reflect on what Battlefield's journey has been so far. For us, Seesaw and using the tools in the iPad has really increased pupil independence it's allowed people to, pupils to have that voice, especially from the step-by-step -step guide in terms of they pick and choose what they want to share with their parents and carers. It's improved their confidence and for staff it's really reduced their workload and as you can see on the left-hand side for P1 and their infant teachers they felt like they were spending more time cutting and sticking out evidence of photos so like it was just a constant cycle. They feel like this is more, much more in the moment. It's instant feedback. The people are proud of their work and what we really like about it is it's so in the moment that by the time they are picked up at 3 o'clock, they have that time to chat their parents and speak about what they learned that day. And for our school, we just want to continue on this journey about how we improve and how we think about what we've done so far and how we can delve into other curricular areas and aspects of the improvement challenge. So even just simple things, you know, delving into literacy for all and looking at your before, during and after reading skills, how we can use these in different apps like the Green Screen and Puppet Pals and our P7s just now, uh, just before actually this all started, we're looking at podcasts and this is for myself, I know I love listening to a podcast but for your pupils this may be something that they really enjoy, it can really improve their confidence and their listening and talking skills. That was so fast so I'm going to post this onto the teams but I hope there was something that you got from that today, again I'll upload the step-by-step -step guide and if you ever need anything just send me an email. But thanks and thanks to Chris and Daniel. We're a great week. Thank you.